Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In the last episode, we went through the Earth Cave, collecting treasure along the way, and we finally made it to the Vampire, who's the person causing all that trouble in Melmond. So pretty much it's our civic obligation to take him out, to bring peace and prosperity back to those people, because really, they don't deserve it. They're just kind of minding their own business. I think that one guy is just a simple farmer, and yeah, he does not deserve this at all. Uh, we should probably heal up, I don't think I did that. No, I did not. So let's make sure we do that. Probably could have done this off screen, but I think that's pretty good. Alright, so let's take him out. And you know he's going to be tough to take out, because apparently no one can defeat him because he's a vampire. So a typical undead creature in Final Fantasy, he's weak to both fire and harm spells. I'm just going to attack with paper and use fire too. You could use fast at this point on your fighter. But uh, as you'll see shortly, this battle isn't actually all that tough. Wow. Wow, that was that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. One hit kill. Okay, well, I'm not going to complain with that. That was pretty cool to get it on camera. Uh, I was going to mention that the vampire has one special ability called Dazzle. It stuns the entire party, but obviously, if you can take him out in one turn, it doesn't really matter too much. <laughs> and 300 points of experience, 2,000 gold, which isn't too shabby. Not too shabby at all. And uh, apparently he was guarding this treasure chest, and it has a ruby. And if you'll remember, the uh, Titan's tunnel is guarded by a Titan who loves to eat rubies. So we can probably give that to him. But if we come over here, it looks like there's actually more to this earth cave than we thought. And I have no idea what the heck that is. Oh, it's a staircase. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm really glad we came across this now. These are cockatrices. These are the bane of my existence in terms of enemies, because they can stone you. And when your character is stoned, haha, <laughs> they're considered dead. So if your entire party gets stoned, then it's game over. Or if, you know, you have one person alive and they get stoned, it's game over. If you come across a group of nine of these, and oh, it's just, it's not fun. But uh, that battle kind of spoiled it. There's a staircase under here, but we can't actually get to it yet because there's a stone plate covering it. And apparently there's something evil down there. Which is kind of strange, because didn't we just take out the vampire, which was the evil causing all the stuff above? Hmm. I guess we'll have to find out. But, uh, how do we get down there? We don't really have any means of doing so. So I think we'll take the ruby, and we'll go to the Titan's Tunnel, and then we'll see where we go from there. So I'll meet you over there. Now that we're back at Titan's Tunnel, you'll probably remember that someone in Melman mentioned that Sarda's cave is actually south of the Titan's Tunnel, so now that we have the ruby, we should be able to get past the Titan and go talk to Sarda. Hopefully he'll have some information as to how we can get past that huge plate that's blocking that staircase in the Earth Cave. So let's go check it out, and as you can see, it's pretty similar to the Earth Cave, it's got that nice leopard skin print to it, although it's blue now, so it's a lot easier on the eyes. and. As you can see, this is the Titan. There's no way you can kind of mistake him for anyone else. He's got uh, blue skin, a red eye, and a black eye. And he's got huge ass muscles. And it almost looks like he's milking a cow or something, which is kind of strange. Hopefully we don't have to fight him. And nope. If we give him the ruby, he'll crunch, crunch, crunch it. Mention that it tastes so sweet, which is kind of strange because it's a really hard mineral. And we have a new enemy, the tiger. I was just going to mention that when I was younger, I used to come here and level up even before I had the ruby, just because uh, there are a few new enemies in here, I think there's also hyenas, and uh, really it was just a change of scenery. The experience and um, gold that they give isn't that great, as you can see, 109 experience points, 108 gold, not nothing too fancy, but if you're grinding in the area for the steel armor, uh, you'll definitely get tired of ogres and whatnot. But at this point, I will point out, the Power Peninsula is still the best place to level up. And now that we're actually at a decent level and we have some decent equipment, it should be a lot easier. And I'll probably actually be going back there in the not too distant future. But first, we have some treasure to pick up here. Uh, first chest, great axe, pretty much useless at this point, just gonna sell it. Uh, we have 620 gold, 450 gold, and last but not least, a silver helmet, which is actually an improvement over the iron helmet, believe it or not. It's kind of weird how the iron armor is better than the silver armor, and yet the silver helmet is better than the iron helmet. Really, Nintendo logic at its finest. And the only way you would actually know that is by individually equipping each piece of equipment, checking your status screen, and seeing that it actually made an improvement, which is kind of tedious, 
and you know Nintendo kind of realized that, Square kind of realized that, and in later versions of Final Fantasy they made it so that when you go to equip something new it actually tells you if it's better or not. So those of you playing the Dawn of Souls remake, you actually have this as well, so enjoy it because it's kind of annoying. I mean at this point I kind of have a general idea of what's better than what, and even if I don't there are some guides on the internet. But uh, yeah, if this was your first time playing when the game first came out and you would have to individually equip each thing and check your status screen and make notes of what's better, it just adds unnecessary time to the game. But now that we're done in Titan's Tunnel, we can head down here, and it's pretty much a straight path, you can't get lost. There's no new enemies in this area, so really nothing worth seeing, but uh, it's just a slight detour, it won't take very long. And we are at the entrance. And as you can see, it's a nice golden yellow color. Nintendo making full use of those uh, NES palettes. I mean, we had red, then we had blue, and now we have yellow, so maybe we'll see green later. And in this room, we have some pots. We can't actually walk over them, which is kind of strange because in Matoya's cave, we could walk over those skulls on the floor, but I guess pots are bigger than skulls. Anyways, if you come over here, this is Sarda. He's got a nice little place going on here. He's got a table, some pots, you know, a nice little bed. Sleeping in his bed. I'm walking on his bed, getting all dirty. Ah, oh, is this a fireplace? No, I guess not. Nothing there. If you talk to Sarda, he'll give us the Ron, which we can use to lift the plate back in the Earth Cave. And I guess it's some sort of magical rod, or maybe like a crowbar. But you'd think if it's a crowbar, four people would be able to lift up the plate that a single crowbar could. But uh, yeah, Nintendo logic at its finest yet again. And that pretty much means that we have to go all the way back down the Earth Cave. And not only that, there's actually a lot more to it that we haven't gone through yet. So at this point, you definitely want to make sure you have updated equipment and magic spells if you don't at this point. I know I'm missing some level 4 spells for Lexa, as well as for Hope. They're not the greatest of spells, but I do want to pick them up just to kind of round out my spell list. I am going to go and grind some gold. I'm going to pick up some... At least one steel armor for paper, just because I noticed I was taking quite a bit of damage when I was going through the Earth Cave the first time around, especially on my way out. And so I'm going to do that off screen. I'm going to try to get up to about level 13 or so, and then at that point I feel like I should be ready for the extra challenges at the bottom of the Earth Cave. Uh, also for items, you want to make sure you have enough heal potions. Make sure you have enough pure potions. I was getting poisoned quite a bit, and I just had enough to get out, but uh, I'll definitely stock up on those as well. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to buy some soft potions too, just because we did see those cockatrices at the end there. If you come across a large pack of them, they can result in a very bad time, to say the least. And so I'm going to make sure I'm going to pick up some of those. Uh, just pointing out, you can't buy these anywhere except for Elfland, I believe, at this point in the game. And they are pretty expensive. They're like 800 or 400 gold each. So you don't have to buy too many of them, but just have a couple, just in case. And uh, yeah, so in the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1, we'll be going to the bottom of the Earth Cave, and hopefully we will defeat whatever evil is lying there, and we can liberate the people of Melman from that evil curse. But until then, my name is Paper Napkin. Take it easy, folks.